Welcome back to the channel. I'm Trayman, and this is the last match of round two of the manga tournament. Will Chainsaw Man continue to tear through the competition, or is that time I caught reincarnated as a slime going to gum up the works? Let's find out. We're gonna start off with that time I got reincarnated as a slime. This is surprising me in how much I've been enjoying it. Part of that is that lit RPG subgenre that I've been talking about being interested in so much lately. So let's talk about it. Starting off with characters, I'm giving this an eight out of 10 for characters. I do feel like there are some missteps here, especially with the love interest character and a few of the minor characters are not really working out. We still have this issue of the cast feeling a little bit bloated without really uh, elaborating on them too much, but I enjoy the feeling of the characters. Maru just collecting this group of goofy offbeat characters. We've got some like fairly common tropey type characters and tropey type um, races in here, but it all works together really well. Atmosphere and setting, I'm also giving an eight for much the same reason. There's just something about the world building here and something about the idea of almost like a D&D &D setting or classic fantasy novel. It's not quite up to the level of Witch Hat, which I feel definitely gives me those stronger like 90s comic vibes, but this is approaching that. It does have a fun world and we are still dealing with the fallout of events that happened in volume one. So even though at times the overall uh, story might feel disconnected and we're just moving from one plot to the next, there is something to say about the world building that is holding the story together. Writing and art, I'm giving a seven. There are some pretty good moments in this one. There was a really cool fight scene with like an Ifrit character where they had the, the fire effects and it was very visually interesting and really stood out. But generally we're looking at a competently drawn and written story, but nothing that excels the way that Witch Hat or some of these other titles do. So I feel like a seven is appropriate for a strong showing, but something that other than those like standout moments, the style is not really going to stand out among other shonen titles. Plot, I'm giving an eight. And I know I just said that the plot is kind of bouncing from one story to the next, but again, it's working with the setting in such a way that it works for me somehow. The episodic nature of the stories in here, how they just kind of stumble from one problem to another, and then those problems, the, the characters they pick up, the connections that they make feed into each other, it does work out really well. I will say I was surprised by how the love interest story wrapped up. I felt like a, that was a little bit odd in its resolution, but also something that I wasn't expecting and was surprising. It also is the part that is the most cringy when it comes to the dialogue and the characters, um, but nothing so terrible that it was distracting. It's a single scene of Rimuru who can now take a physical form vacillating between a very well endowed woman and an effeminate man and talking about why he wants one form over the other. And it's a little bit weird, but especially given the context of how he got that form, but it wasn't anything that was so terrible that it uh, tanked the rest of the comic. Intrigue, I'm giving an eight as well. We are coming upon possibly a longer form story in this demon lord that's working in the background. And we see at the conclusion him giving this one creature a name. We know that we've established that naming magic is very strong in this world. And so it does 
interest me enough that I want to pick up the next volume. I want to see what's going to happen. And it does tie in with events that were happening earlier in the story. So we are from, from these disparate pieces, this kind of uh, uncontrolled chaos that we seem to have in the first volume. I know I mentioned that it felt very disconnected and I still feel like that's sort of the case here, but we are seeing these threads come together and we are now finally building toward a longer form narrative, which I was very happy to see. Logic and relationships, I've got to give a six. So just above average and the weakest of the categories for this volume. It really all comes down to this romantic interest character, Shizu. The problem is the awkward way that her both entering the comic and exiting the comic within the span of a single issue is handled. And especially the end with her other adventuring party and what they ask Rimuru to do um, felt weird. It didn't, I can't say it felt out of character because I don't know these characters, but it was a little off putting given what we knew leading up to that point. And again, I think, I think it's a really odd choice to introduce a character and have them come in, be established as somehow a, uh, not only a love interest for the main character, but someone he is fated to meet and then have them written out in the same volume. Meanwhile, a lot of the other characters that come in, like I've been saying throughout this review, because we have this kind of disjointed narrative, they come in, they have like their spotlight moment, their spotlight chapters, and then they're kind of forgotten and not brought up again, unless like they play some key part in the next person's narrative. So I feel like we're still in these moments where we're building up the party and we're building up relationships. We're still doing some world building. So I can understand why that aspect of it is there. The, the aspect of these new characters coming in and not getting a lot of screen time or attention that might eventually settle down once we have our core cast of characters. But some of the choices made with Shizu were just weird and I did not care for them. My overall enjoyment of this volume was an eight out of 10. I really liked it. It read incredibly quickly. I think I read this in less than half an hour and it's not from a lack of dialogue like I get with Blood on the Tracks. Like I expect Blood on the Tracks to be a very short read because there's not a whole lot of talking in it. It's very much visually based, but this has a fair amount of discussion, a fair amount of dialogue, and it still read really quickly. I found myself turning the pages, really interested in seeing where the story was going. While it didn't have a clear through line, we do have the stories kind of bleeding into each other as they go. And so while it does feel like here's a story, here's an adventure story, and here's another adventure story, and here's another adventure story, they are loosely connected as you go through. And now I feel like we're building toward a longer form story. So I'm even more invested in seeing where this goes and continuing to read this series. That time I got reincarnated as a slime ends up at a 53 for the raw score, which is a 7.57 out of 10. So a very strong showing. Uh, it'll be four stars on Goodreads. This is not one that I was expecting to enjoy as much as I did. I thought this would be like a goofy, like uh, a goofy isekai story, and it is, but I'm really enjoying it. I really like it. Now we just have to see if it's good enough to beat Chainsaw Man. Chainsaw Man is up there with uh, Witch Hat Atelier. In, in round one as like the comic book to beat in this tournament. We pick up the story right where we left off from volume one, fighting the Bat Devil. And from there, we go into a couple of other characters' backstories. We learn about the Gun Devil. Uh, there's quite a bit packed into this volume. Just like volume one, it doesn't waste any space in 
establishing character or establishing story. So let's get into the call pile. Characters, I'm giving a nine out of 10. The characters remain both funny and sad and cynical, disgusting, but intriguing. I don't know how the author pulls this off. Like a lot of these characters are gross and rude and terrible. And if they were people in real life, I don't think I'd want to be around them. But he strikes this balance of humor and heart and just like seeing this group of people having to band together and work together that just really works for me. We learn more about power in this volume. We learn more about Aki, and I think it's to the story's credit. We have a character whose power is revealed in this volume to be the ability to summon a giant wolf's head to nom nom on the devils that he fights against. And that's the least interesting thing about him in this volume. Like his backstory and his motivations are far more compelling than what his cool power is. Like the powers are cool and Denji's power is cool with the chainsaw arms, but the, the, I'm more invested in the characters as people and the characters as like what they are having to give up, what they're trying to accomplish in this world that is so terrible and, and, and just depressing. The atmosphere and setting, I'm giving this a 10 out of 10 for the setting. I feel like this this feels like a, a fully realized world. There's something about the weight of the devil's attack and the, uh, the toll it inflicts on people. There's something about the stories that everyone shares about what they've had to give up or what their options are in life, in the world, if they weren't hunting the devils, that just makes it feel fully realized in a way that I don't feel a lot of shonen series do. A lot of shonen that I read tends to set up a cool world, but then not actually deal with the repercussions of that world. Um, thinking back on something like Goblin Slayer that we looked at in round one, one of my biggest points of contention there was that the way the world acts is not does not match up with the way the world really works. So people's behavior and people's actions don't match with the world you've created. And here I think it's masterfully done. So many of the characters' backstories and um, personalities are tied in with the devils. Their motivations are tied in with the devils the way that they have to sacrifice things in their life is related to the the way that the appearance of devils has shifted the world and created these spaces, created these expectations. I think that's all a testament to excellent world building. Writing and art, I'm giving a nine out of 10. At its best, the action in this comic reminds me of Berserk, which I think is one of the most beautiful, like visceral fighting manga out there. Um, as far as like scenes of war and battle scenes, the way they set up fights, um, this gives me those same kind of vibes. And then you have the more personal moments, the interactions with the characters, and they can still be goofy too. And it doesn't feel incongruous. It still works because the writing uh, unifies those two parts. It makes sense that these characters would be irreverent or goofy or have these different reactions to what's going on around going on around them as a means of coping and not as just like haha look at this funny character and his like his gag this is like his his shtick like you sometimes get in these comics this comic even manages to take the aspects of shonen comics that i enjoy the least which is like the crass humor and the um kind of grosser motivations of the characters having these like pervert characters and actually make it work let me get into specifics on this denji is now at the point where his goal is to uh, touch a girl's boobs and uh, he succeeds in that goal in this volume um, in 
a, a scene that is both like it, it it's awkward and weird um, and kind of funny and then afterwards he's like that wasn't fulfilling at all that did not that didn't do anything for me it didn't mean anything and they actually have this he actually has this conversation with makima about like how a person that you do that with should it should be special it should be someone that you formed an emotional bond with and like what comic does that like normally this kind of stuff is just thrown in there as like visual gags this is why fire force didn't make it through round one and here they can have those like grosser moments there's also a lot with like the toilet um in their shared in their shared house um and that's all kind of gross but still like i don't know because of the characters because of again the the more follow up with like realistically how would someone deal with this how would they feel about these events afterwards like it worked for me somehow and that was really surprising cuz that is something that usually turns me off from the mainline shonen manga is these uh again this crass humor this toilet humor but here because they have the commentary afterwards because the character realizes maybe these aren't the kind of goals i'm supposed to be going for maybe i need something that's more substantial now i can actually i'm actually at a point where my life is stabilizing maybe i should achieve things that are better than this and then of course goes right back to bickering with power um like like siblings it's 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 great it's wonderful even as he's fighting with the monsters he's talking about like i'm doing this so i can touch a girl's boobs and the monster's like I'm sorry, what? You're, you're doing this for what? That's the stupidest reason I've ever heard. And he's like, we're going to have a dream battle. And he is getting like completely trounced. And something about the acknowledgement of the monster being like, uh, you're going to die and you're going to die trying to achieve something that was really dumb. Just somehow that undercut crass childish nature of this wager. So... I don't so, somehow it worked somehow it worked and it, it, it reversed it and made it even better it, it was a lot of fun Plot I'm giving a 9 out of 10 this continues to uh, move forward uh, every bit you know works into the next point um, you are it's, it's building it's expanding the world it is teaching us more um, at a pretty rapid pace and in ways that don't feel forced or like overly long explanations of world building. So that's all very positive. Intrigue, I'm giving it eight out of 10. They, they are currently in a situation that there doesn't seem to be a clear answer to or a solution for. Um, they are getting to where they don't understand the nature of the monster they're fighting against. And so the end was very strong. I don't think this is built on a lot of um, mystery, but the story does drive forward very quickly. Just like with uh, that time I got reincarnated as a slime, I finished this volume in like half an hour. It was very, it was a page turner. It was very easy to read. And I think part of that is just the constant moving forward of the plot. Um, and in keeping you wanting to read by having these action scenes and then again at the end actually having a little bit of mystery as well for relationships i'm giving it a 10 out of 10 just like volume one i could take any two characters in this uh, story and put them next to each other and talk about what did we what is the relationship between these two how do they feel about each other what conflict exists between them everybody feels totally real and i think that's a really hard thing to balance but again because you have these fully realized characters all with unique backgrounds all with unique motivations even the characters that get along and work with each other they have things that they disagree with and they have struggles with each other and all of them are unique and none feel like caricatures and so because you have that strong foundational that strong foundation of character 
you also have this really strong element of relationships in the comic. And like I said, you could look at, you know, Denji and Aki. Where is their relationship right now? It's not quite where it was at the end of Volume 1. They are getting into more of a begrudging uh, thing. Parts parts of the relationship, uh, Denji is pushing a little bit more. And so Aki's getting more frustrated with certain aspects of it. But you can feel a begrudging camaraderie uh, building between them. Uh Denji and Power are not the same at the beginning of this volume as they are at the end as far as their relationship goes. We introduce some more characters toward the end of this volume. They've all got their own backgrounds and motivation. They've all got a, a unique personality. And you can still point out, even with these characters that have only existed for about a fourth of this volume, I can still pick any one of them out and say, okay, this character and this character, how do they feel toward each other? This one and this one, how are they feeling? How, what, is their, what is the nature of their relationship? And it's been developed enough, even that short time span, that they're all unique and interesting and the interplay between them works really well. So it's one of the strongest aspects of this comic is surprisingly, not just the fight scenes or the action, it's the characterization and the relationships. They were all really strong. For overall enjoyment, I gave this a nine out of 10. And the only thing that's holding it back is a little bit of that crass humor. Yes, it turns around. Yes, it ultimately ends up working most of the time, but it's still there. And it's still a little off-putting when certain scenes are happening. So that did dampen my uh, enjoyment of it somewhat. But overall, this is an amazing comic. This is an amazing volume. It's a great follow-up. continues to build upon the strengths of the first one rather than spinning its wheels or... Um, you know, going off on a tangent of something else. It does such a good job with balancing all these elements in a way that is like readable and exciting that it's probably one of the strongest things I've read in a good while, like comic book or otherwise. Chainsaw Man Volume 2 ends up with a Copile score of 64, which ends up being a 9.14 out of 10. This is gonna get five stars on Goodreads. It's amazing, you should check it out. And that means that Chainsaw Man has knocked out that time I got reincarnated as a slime. I'm gonna pick that up, I'm still gonna read that. Here is how the ranking currently looks. So Chainsaw Man will be facing off against B-Stars. Next week, we'll be starting off our semi-final rounds with Blood on the Tracks versus Witch Hat. And I think that's going to be a really interesting one because they are very different comics. But if you look at their ratings, they're only a handful of points away from each other. So depending on how that those individual volumes work out, it really could be anybody's game. Chainsaw Man will go up against B-Stars in a few weeks, and then we will get into our final matchup with volume four of whatever moves on from the semifinals. I hope this video was entertaining for you. I hope you continue to enjoy the manga tournament as I dive deeper and deeper into these books. As always, please like, subscribe, leave a comment down below if you've read any of these comics and you want to chat with me about them. As always, I hope your reading journey is going well. And until the next one, take care.